Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. Today I have the pleasure to show you some of the new modules contained in the collection free, in this particular case, the Euclid module. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Additionally, if you would like to support what I do, please do follow the instruction contained in the video description. Okay, so Mela 6, as you heard, there are some really, really pretty nice preset. The one I was playing in the introduction is uh, a pad called Demo 4.7 from the factory preset. Really a nice tone. As you can see, we just have an um, audio channel inside the AUM, and it's just Mela 6. Um, as a simple instance. Okay, perfect. So let's uh, maximize the screen so you see a little bit more. Now let's bring up our previous preset and let's close these up and um, let's uh, remove the other lanes which we don't need for now. So we just have a, a virtual analog oscillator with a sound wave. <laughs> Maybe what we are going to do is increase a little bit the attack. So it sounds a little bit uh, better, doesn't it? Okay. So today we are going to go inside the model collections uh, number three. And as you can see, um, there are 18 modules and um, all pass, all due to mode, correlation, digital delay, dual plan, Euclid, which we're going to give you a demonstration today. Macro button, mid side, multiply, add, noise gate, and chance, and um, uh, sorry, note chance, note event, some in phase inverter, pitch follower, which is really good, reverb as well. And I'm demonstrating how you could actually create something similar to reverb last time and the last tutorial using a comb filter uh, or all pass filter in sequences, ring modulation, simple FO and a stereo pan. Okay, so just remember you need. Uh, um, um, module collection frame for this tutorial. So we have this nice uh, preset. So it's very simple. MIDI imp to collect the input MIDI, MIDI to poly to convert the MIDI signal into poly, which goes into the VA oscillator, which uses a sine wave, then the amplitude envelope to control um, the sound coming out from the oscillator and then audio output. We might want to include something else here, for example, insert audio processor. Let's go to the very bottom and choose why not volume so that we can control the volume here. Okay, that sounds better, but let's go to the point of this tutorial. So let's include a Euclid uh, module. So I go, I'm going to do it here between the MIDI to poly and the MIDI in, not before MIDI in, because MIDI in is capturing MIDI in event. So I'm going to click here on the free dot, insert MIDI processor and then Euclid. And there it is. So if you check the um, help, it says that it converts incoming MIDI notes into Euclidean rhythm. So the core idea is to arrange a given number of events as evenly as possible in a pattern and then you have different controls. So as always you can enable the disable it and you have the all the usual option here in the context menu. And then at the top you have three different tabs. It opens with steps which makes sense but let's start with sync. So think, sync. Uh, the um, sync first of all is the sync to the host. So here how it works. So I'm going to press a C note, a C3 note um, uh, from for using my external controller and I'm going to hold it. So as you hold it, it is repeating the sign in, uh, sorry, the sound in uh, Evelyn, depending on the number of steps and pulses, which I will explain in a moment. Now the speed that is using for that depending on, depends on the sync here, which is synced to the host. So therefore uh, at the moment is using 1 16th. I could accelerate it to 1 32. So it's faster now, or I could decelerate it to 1 8th. Okay, so that's up to you. So at the moment, I'm going to leave it to 1 16th. Next, you have the gate, so you can adjust the gate, how open the, no the notes are kept when they are played. 
that depends very much on the amplitude here which uh, oops let's leave that there that we have selected here so uh, different options you can adjust it here as well I recommend you have a bit of release otherwise when it let goes when mid event let goes or, uh, or there is a release in terms of an event there is not enough release for the sound to be produced not too much decay as well as when it gets repeated very quickly you uh, that will not work okay so Next, you have steps. This is the crucial point. So let's start with steps in the middle. So it says eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A step. So you could go to 10, like so, right? And then you have a number of pulses. You can see the full dot here are the pulses. One, two, three. And you can see they're spread evenly, right? Now, let's say that I'm going to do five pulses. Um, on 10 steps, you can see at the moment it shows you only two step because it's the equivalent of having one half. If you divide the pulses by five and the step by five, it becomes one and then here two, right? That is why it's alternating between uh, only two steps. Hopefully that makes sense. But as soon as you put six, right, you want to do six pulses, right? On 10 step, it changes seven pulses. Right, again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Seven pulses, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So it tries to evenly uh, spread around the pulses, around the number of stamps, simplifying also the pattern depending on what you have chosen. Okay, and then you you have rotation. Pay attention if play, you have these three pulses here at the top, okay, then uh, open here on the side. So if I press one here to rotate, they move to this way anti-clockwise. Uh, so one, two, three. Uh, I press here minus zero and it goes back. So it rotates either this way or that way. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Next you have accent and this is where you can give accents to some of the pulses which are played and here you can set the velocity for that accent. So if I press one here, you see it illuminates these pulse here, one accent. Now if I do three, you'll have one there, two and three, again, uh, spread evenly. Now you don't hear anything really. You don't hear any variation and that is because there's nothing controlling the level of the voltage uh, um, uh, sorry, the virtual analog OC later. That is why you get uh, um, that um, um, the problem. So there is a way to do that. Click here on the free dot, go to insert, go to modulator and choose MIDI source. And we insert the MIDI source after the Euclid, which is generating the event. Okay, we say modulator as an input source to choose the velocity, and this is the crucial point. And then we're going to say as a target to go to the vo virtual analog oscillator and to control the level, and then we give it some intensity. Now let's scroll to the left, let's set these to uh, zero to make a difference. And you can hear now that it's changing the level. Okay, because effectively you have an accent here, and let's uh, increase the velocity here as well. So every time you have an accent here, the velocity go up. And then, of course, these are the MIDI messages which are going to the MIDI source, which is then taking that velocity and modulate the level here on the uh, virtual analog oscillator. Right, that is why you get the variational level, and of course, you can hear the you can hear the pulses. Okay, great. Now um, you might want to adjust the amplitude envelope.
the gap on velocity will create that click as well that you hear. Now, one of the great things that you can use the Euclid module is actually to create some pattern, for example, for drums. So instead of using a virtual analog oscillator, you could replace it, for example, with a uh, noise oscillator, like so. We select type white. And there you are. And of course, this is using sync, and the sync that is used is 116. And then, of course, you can play around here with the different uh, um, step and the, the four pulses and create unique patterns. If you want to make it more dramatic as well as changes, for example, you could um, put, for example, before MIDI to um, poly uh, or, or before the MIDI source, you could, for example, insert uh, under MIDI, you could go here and insert something around the velocity. Then you can give an offset, for example, a random addition to velocity, and you can set the minimum maximum velocity for the event coming out from the Euclid module. And that's quite interesting because you can play, uh, you can check what is happening here on the level. And by the way, I should have actually changed the target here. So it needs to go to uh, the noise oscillator and level to, to make it work. So giving a minus offset will make the starting point almost to zero, which you can put it almost to zero if you want to. Then you can increase the intensity to make wider here in terms of modulation. Decrease the offset goes a little bit greater here in terms of the velocity that is coming out from the Euclid module. You see a starting point which is greater here than zero as I decrease the offset, right? And then, of course, you can uh, do whatever you like, right? So here yeah, you don't need it to poly. You can change to, I don't know, pink. Equally, you can change the gate here, remember? So you can create a different variation for, for example, for your hi-hat. But if that is not what you want, of course, you can uh, use, uh, again, the uh, oscillator that we had before to, of course, create variation. So let's bring back the virtual analog oscillator. Let's reset the modulation here uh, to the level, increase the intensity. There you go. Let's change here the waveform, square. Let's increase the intensity here. And you can create a really nice rhythm, which of course you can change here, changing the accent or changing the number of pulses per step, and then you can go fancy, right? So you could insert another module here. You can go to the Miller Lab, why not, and try a reverb. can go back to poly. You can 
create some rhythm, for example, from tr for things like Transgate. If you want to get even more fancy than that, add another lane and then go to modulator, add a random module. Why not? Which I will explain more in an upcoming tutorial. Go to target, choose as a target, go to DVA oscillator. You can choose something there if that is what you need. Or if that's not what you need, go here, insert, for example, under pitch processor. Okay do a pitch ratio so we said uh, well actually instead of a pitch ratio let's uh, replace that with a oops uh, with a pitch uh, a relative pitch actually that's better and then we can change the semitone here or poly signal before going to the va oscillator in a in a random way so as a target here we go to uh, the relative pitch and we change the semitone then we set the intensity Smooth the changes, great. We can decrease the depth or make it bigger. In this case, you have the Euclid. Uh, module which is creating the rhythms is changing the um, um, level here of the oscillator right so you have different velocity and then you have these random modulator which is randomizing the changes of the pitch on this relative pitch here module which is changing the pitch of incoming poly messages from the midi to poly which goes into the DA oscillator i hope that makes sense so there's a lot you can do with melasix really great product hope you enjoyed and as always see you next time bye